Welcome everybody. Today we're discussing Lovely Runner, which just finished airing last week and has been an enormous sleeper hit with Korean and international audiences. I'm one of your hosts, Elisa, and I'm joined by Melanie, Vicky, and Joe Beveridge, who may be the biggest Lovely Runner fan we know. The super fan. <laughs> the super ultra fan. super fan. So I'm so excited that you uh, joined us. And for those of you who don't know, she's actually was a huge influencer in the Lovely Runner fandom. I think it's fair to say that with your videos. So no lie. Excited. No, no lie. lie. That's accurate. <laughs> So loud. <laughs> um, <laughs> briefly, Lovely Runner tells the story of a fan who travels to the past to save the life of her favorite K-pop idol who dies under mysterious circumstances. And it stars Kim Hye Yoon as Im Sol, the ultimate loyal fan, Byon Usok as Sun Jae, the stunningly handsome idol with the soul of a loser. And soul of a loser. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna have we to fight. No, 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 there's not going to be any fights. The entire fandom agrees with me, as Joe knows, right? Am I correct? And oh Song yeah. Gyeon, he... It is a term as, of endearment at this point. It's a term of endearment, okay. totally a term of endearment. And Song Gyeon, he as the second male lead, Taesung, a cheeky bastard with a secret heart of gold. Yeah. And um, before we begin, I just want to warn folks that we will be spoiling this drama as part of our deep dive. So if you haven't already watched Lovely Runner... Go check it out and then come back and listen. If if you haven't watched it, where have you been? Have you been living under a rock? <laughs> I know, exactly. right? Like, how would you not have caught up with it? Actually, I do think people are starting it now because they wanted to binge. So there are mm. actually people leaping on board uh, now. But then if you're one of those, binge it, finish it, and then come back. Because yeah, we're spoiling absolutely, it. And absolutely. we're spoiling it right away. Yeah. Um, so to begin our discussion, I just wanted to go through some stats to illustrate what a phenomenon this drama was. It topped Vicky viewership ratings in over 130 regions, including India, Australia, the United States, France, Canada, Germany, Brazil, Italy, and Mexico, among many other countries Ooh. right now. <laughs> Korean TV streamer TV Ing, I think is how you pronounce it, exceeded yeah. Netflix's total usage time for the first time on the day the last episode of Lovely Runner aired. And it's the first time that a Korean streamer has surpassed Netflix's total usage time. And supposedly the executives at the company held an emergency meeting to analyze the numbers because they were so shocked. It was just unprecedented. <laughs> And the song Sonaki, which is Sudden Shower, entered the Melon Top 10 on May 13th, which is uh, the music charts in Korea. And it has eventually reached number five, which is a ranking Ooh. that even legit K-pop groups struggle to achieve. And it's currently still in the top 10. Yeah. So and we can do <laughs> even more stats than that, but I think that gives you a sample for how loved this drama is and what a phenomenon it was and how truly it's buzzed about. Truly a phenomenon. And I will say this is one of my, you know, it was just so enjoyable because you felt like everybody was watching it and we were watching it week by week and that just made it even more enjoyable. And then we had all of Joe's, what do you think's going to happen? Videos? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's analyze this time travel. Let's, let's do it. I, like, I had, I just had, even though it was kind of cute and fluffy in a lot of ways, it had stuff to talk about. Maybe not um, F4 timeline levels of symbolism of every <sighs> costume or whatever, but still it was, like it felt like everybody was watching it and I, there was a week i was out, out of the country and i wasn't caught up and i'm like what what are my priorities like <laughs> you know like i need to be up to date on this drama so that i'm not spoiled by you know going into any social media it was crazy and it's still raging yeah it's still it's still it's still eating up twitter it's still eating up reddit and Instagram, it's just all over the place, even, I mean, it only ended a week ago, but still, yeah. I mean, to have this level of intense interest is pretty amazing. So I'm just curious, like one by one, I'd like everybody to just kind of give a brief, like, how did you feel about this drama before we start to dive into it more? <laughs> and Vicky, start with you. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh man, lovely runner. It was a surprise gem. 
Um, I'm, I was probably one of the few that when I first saw it, I was like, oh, okay, another idol drama. I'm not interested. Because I had my eyes set on this other drama, which shall not be named, that disappointed me greatly. Um, so, <laughs> everybody knows. So. Yeah, we know. <laughs> but, you know, I went into Lovely Runner, and oh my God, by the end of episode two, I was like, I'm in. I am in, I am in, I am in, I'm in. And I don't know, like it was just a very light drama. It was refreshing and I feel like it came at a time where none of us was like expecting anything grand. We were all like either in a K-drama slump or we were like just, you know, vibing. And then it came. And to me, personally, I thought everybody did their part from the lead, the female, the side characters. I thought that it was a well-rounded cast even though they were very underrated they're not you know they're not like super popular they're they didn't have much advertisement they didn't have much promo but it was like a surprise underrated well not underrated but like what is the word underdog hit that just kind of rose organically and i feel like they just deserve everything that's coming their way it was a it was a good drama i recommend i recommend that's all i was saying I don't know if I started it the very first week that it started airing. I think at least so you started watching it, Joe. I think you started tweeting about it. And I was like, okay, like I can't, you know, and I was like, all right, I guess. And then I sort of rapidly caught up because I mean, it wasn't, I wasn't, it wasn't too many weeks in, but I'm like, it was definitely so bingeable. I mean, our male lead is so adorable, so Thank cute. You. Like you're sucked in immediately. And I do have just the whole initial first episode setup of this sort of fan fiction drama about a K-pop idol. Are you kidding me? Like that is just <laughs> totally my jam. So I yeah. I was totally into that. So, I mean, we we rapidly move away from that for the most part, you know, but yeah, it yeah. becomes much more of a high school drama. But, um, yeah, it just hit me in the feels. I'm not going to say this was my most favorite drama ever, but it was so enjoyable um, to watch. And, you know, these were mostly fresh faces for me, which was also kind of nice too, you know? Um, I mean, yeah, some of the supporting characters, uh, we've, you know, the dad, the mom, we've seen them in many dramas, but as far as our leads, they were more fresh faces to me. And that was, that was fun. Joe, Joe go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I started because it was time travel <laughs> because it was for you. That's the reasons I started it. What I found fascinating, though, is that we just had a string of time travel dramas. Yeah. This one's coming up at the end of all. I'm watching like, another one right time now. Travel yeah. Fatigue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, me too, right? We'll talk about that one later. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but um, but I, I was hooked in from, personally, from episode one. Really, I reckon from the bridge scene, because I thought that Bionu what what he was doing on that scene, you could see it in his eyes that there was something more going on here. I always thought that you could see that from episode one. I was like, okay, there's a mystery here. He, and he kept looking at the little, you know, jar of lollies. I was like, okay, hey, something's going on. I don't know what it is. But um, it just ended up being a really beautiful love story. I, I actually love that it wasn't as complicated as we all. Oh, my God, it. yes. I, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and I couldn't explain. Like, normally I am... I'm in for the confusion. I'm in for the mystery. I want to solve things. And even though there wasn't a lot mm. to solve, I didn't matter. I was in each week. I was just like, I was re-watching scenes. I was getting up before work, which I have to get up at five to go to work. So, you know, I was getting up at four to, to watch oh, this before getting ready to go to work. Wow. I just wanted to see the adorableness. <laughs> no, my favorite thing was yes. going on Instagram. I was obsessed. <laughs> and getting the four the five a.m. video with tears streaming down your face <laughs> because of the latest episode. It was wow. so great. Was I don't great. even know if it was tears or if it was just sheer exhaustion. <laughs> lack of sleep. It was lack of sleep. <laughs> it was. It was delirious. Oh. I mean, Elisa, how did you, you hadn't been well, really watching a lot of K-dramas, to be honest with yeah. you, you know, like you had been Correct. Um, trying out more Japanese dramas and different things. And I was kind of surprised to see you getting hooked on a K-drama. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, it was like, not just this one, but suddenly a bunch of dramas dropped that I was interested in. So I actually started a bunch of currently airing dramas at the same time, which was kind of, like you said, surprising because I had been out of K-dramas for a while and kind of feeling like meh about a lot of them. Um, and, you know, so the, I Lovely Runner. So how do I talk about this? It, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was super cute but I definitely did not feel the obsession that so many people felt. Like, I just didn't, yeah. I thought, wow, this is really cute. I, I like the actors, it's cute, it's sweet. I never, but I mean, the, the level of emotion, the outpouring of, you know, love for this drama, the obsession, the constant posting, the <clears throat> all of that was kind of, I was kind of sitting here going, wow. Like, I really don't understand it. Like, part of why I wanted to do this was just to be like, hey, explain it to me. Like, what was it about this drama <laughs> that made it so cracky? I mean, there's definitely, <sighs> good, obviously, there's really good stuff. Like, I want to give a shout out to Bjorn Usok because it would not have worked for me at all without him in that role. Absolutely. I don't, okay. this isn't my genre. You guys know this. I don't usually yeah. go for super tropey uh, romances. It's not my thing. And his character is implausible. You know, it's a gorgeous, wealthy, famous guy who's never been in a real relationship in 15 years and still hung up on his high school sweetheart. I mean, this is like absurd. I mean, I they kind of reply he died a virgin in the first episode. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. And I'm like, what he's a virgin. He's a virgin. No, and so like the whole <laughs> concept of the character was so ridiculous, right? But then mm -hmm. he sold you on it. That's what was so amazing to me, yeah. you know, because he's so beautiful yeah. to look at. He's stunning. And I had seen him before in... Um, uh, Flower Crew Joseph Marriage Agency. And he was perfectly fine, but it was a really different role. He was playing a player. Yeah. Like he hung out at the Gisang house and he was always sleeping with married women and getting information. He was super slick. And I mean, he was definitely noteworthy for his appearance because I was like, wow, that guy is really good looking. You know, <laughs> right? You know, how could you miss him? But otherwise, I wasn't impressed with him at all. And then in Lovely Runner, it was the contrast between him being this stunningly beautiful man and being, being ridiculous you know <laughs> yeah. like just being such a right such a beauty <laughs> ball, throwing kisses and getting jealous oh and those God. laughs he would make when he was pretending not to be jealous like ha 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 you know <laughs> or like when they were in um the eighth episode when they are he, she's trying to stay in his apartment all night oh. and she says you know, can I have ramyun? And ramen, he yeah. and she goes, and dwe, you know, which I guess means like can't I in <laughs> Korean? And he goes, dwe, in this like choked <laughs> voice. And that was just so charming. I loved, I mean, so he he really he really made it for me. Anybody else in that role, and I probably would have dropped the drama. He's the one who kept me going yeah, for sure. Totally. And so, Kim here, you well, I don't want to, but you know, that's like what did you guys think of him? I mean, I guess you guys agree right like on his his yeah. performance well i mean uh, kim Hyun, the role was written for her wasn't it i'm sorry it's literally written for her well the, the, so, the role of imsa was literally written for. Kim i know Hyun. and the thing yeah. is though like i saw her in um extraordinary you and honestly it's very similar performance mm -hmm. and role i like him here Yoon a lot i mean i i but i wasn't surprised by it anything I saw from her in the drama. You know what I mean? Like I, I felt like, yeah, she's doing what she does. Like she's good at it and she did the role the way you would expect her to do the role. So I didn't have that sense of like, whoa, that performance came out of nowhere. I didn't, where did that come from? I didn't know this person was capable of it. Whereas with him, I yeah. definitely had that sense of, no, whoa, yeah. I didn't even know he could do this. You know, yeah, I didn't know yeah, he had yeah. the comedy chops for this and, you know, yeah. to yeah. do that. Yeah, but you, Vicky, was it him that just totally sucked you in? Man. <laughs> At the risk of sounding shallow, yes, it was him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, <I'll> look. <laughs> I mean, can you blame me? No. I... I was minding my business and I just <laughs> tuned into this drama and this man just waltz out of nowhere singing um, like an idol looking beautiful and then you have him be a loser 
in love? Are you kidding me? Come on. It's like they gave all the recipes that I needed and, and they gave it to him of all people. And it's like, <laughs> like it was eye candy. But beyond that, I really just liked, like, like Alyssa said, for me, it wowed me. I mean, I had seen him in, what was it? I had seen him in that strong girl drama that he did a little bit, you know what I mean? And I saw him in the drama he did with Bogam um, and Pak Sudam. I forgot the right, name. I don't know if anybody remember. Uh, yeah, yeah, that drama. It's it's not that memorable. But anyways, um, <laughs> I remember thinking, oh, he's so cute. Like, you know, I like him. He's a model. Cool. But this one, I feel like gave him range. You know what I mean? And like like you said, Kim Hyun, I've seen her in other dramas. I know she can act. Like, I mean, you know, she does her thing. She did her thing in Extraordinary You. She did her thing in all the Dr- Sky Castle. She She's great. You know, so I feel like a lot of us already knew this is like her drama. She's going to, you know, leave this the way she could. That's why I think he became a surprise hit for a lot of us because nobody was expecting it. You know what I mean? A lot of us just kind of thought, oh, okay, he's just going to be like, a, I can't, you know, mm, nice, but nothing. But I do think that he definitely showed more range here. And if it also wasn't for her as well, I feel like they worked together. It worked out. I, I appreciate their their partnership because at the same time too, yeah, he did great, but it would have also kind of been, eh, if she wasn't equally as you know great too and on par with emotions and um just kind of working with each other so to me i don't know both of them were the reason why i stayed you know i went in just kind of like oh they're cute and then i was like okay they're cute yeah they're cute (laughs) you know like like they're cute i like them together and i thought i think that's what made me stay and the story was also cute yeah, I mean, they had this, this, you know, sometimes you just can't bottle the on-screen chemistry, right? Yeah, like yeah. something on paper, it can be more than what's on paper when you have mm-hmm. two certain actors on screen making it come to life. And I definitely felt like we had that here because it, it, at a certain point, it didn't even really matter so much to me because we had so many twists and turns with the story and the stupid serial killer and all of that. <laughs> but... I was on board because I wanted to see the next cute thing that these two kids were going to do together. Right. Yeah. Like that was yeah. what it was all about. Yeah. It was just like, yeah. what embarrassing situation are they going to get in next? <laughs> you know, And where yeah. you're just going to die of secondhand embarrassment for whatever it was. And so that their chemistry was re- really kept me going and wanting to see, are they going to get that happy ever after um, in that final episode? So Joe, mm-hmm. go ahead. Totally, their their chemistry, 100%. And also just, you're right, every, you're hanging out for the next setup, for the next ridiculous moment, like (laughs) where they're sitting in the restaurant watching the Olympics. And then she spits out, like he asks her to spit the hot dumpling out into his hand. Yeah. Like those little moments all the way through it, you were just, those were the things that got reshared. Those were the things that people were talking about. It was like, we talked about the plot as well, but we were there for those ridiculous setups that were just so endearing and so character building as well like you really got a sense of who these two people were just from these interactions and one thing I thought that could have been cringe and never was was the fact that in episode one she was a fan going to save an idol and the progression of watching her actually switch from loving him as a fan and then loving him as a man Mm-hmm. was really well handled I thought like I just mm-hmm. I, I didn't know how yeah. it was going to happen but they did it in such a good way and I loved it it could have yeah. gone really creepy and it didn't so <laughs> I, agree. I agree with you I think yeah. I, well setting it up so that he was already in love with her I think yeah helps because <laughs> then it wasn't so fixated on the fan stuff it was yeah. you know uh, the plot twist that we all needed. That was that. That was definitely one of them. episode the other, two. Well, the other and the and the other thing that I was thinking about is like this was a f- source of frustration for me. But then I realized it's may- maybe the genius of the program is that I felt like the time skips got really repetitive after a while mm. because you had the same emotional beats in every time skip. You had a lot of the similar comedy moments in every time skip. 
you know, like the ages of the characters changed, but what <laughs> happens between them is almost the same in every yeah. era. And I yeah. thought, well, you know, for me, I was like, oh, we're doing this again. But then I realized for the fans, it meant, oh, we're doing this again. It means that you're getting fed the tropes four times as much. There were four time skips. So the yeah. fact that that fourth time skip came out of nowhere and made no plot sense, and there was really no reason why by the rules of the universe you should have been able to skip a fourth time, but nobody cared. Nobody cared because you got fed all of the good stuff again <laughs> one more time. And that was really, it was kind of like a machine to feed you romantic yeah. tropes from a cast that was really good at it, yeah. you know, and not just the two leads. Yeah. The whole cast was very strong. Yeah. I like the parallels though. Like, I feel like in every time travel, while it was repetitive, I felt like they always made it different in a way. I don't know, that was just my perspective of it. Like, I felt like it was similar, but then they would do it in a way where it was kind of like mimicking what was done before, but it was kind of like a parallel. You know, it was like the same thing happens, but in a different way. I felt like that was the theme that kept on happening with each time skip after like, one or twice like okay it seems like they will they will kind of like get rid of this but then add this one and it's like the same emotions but it's like you know oh i feel like i've seen this before but i haven't it's new so i don't know i maybe that's why it worked for me because i usually don't like time travel dramas because i also feel the same way it's repetitive um or sometimes it doesn't make sense but i feel like this time though it was repetitive they saved it by giving us something to kind of like compare what we already had to like it was like oh in this episode he she held this way but to this one he's she's doing this way i don't know it felt new to me i don't know i don't know if that was yeah. like me that was it well, yeah i agree like I, I yeah agree. It, it, it always felt like they try to the only bit that ever really yeah. go ahead joe but yeah go the only bit that I ever thought that ever ever felt like it was deliberately repeating was their kind of meet cutes in each different time. Yeah. Each like outside of that, it usually actually varied quite a bit. But when they were first meeting, it was yeah. kind of displaying this idea that what's happened before is gonna like there's a high chance it's gonna happen again. So they oh, just yeah. needed to have that yeah. like the line where he's like, I didn't make you cry, did I? Or whatever the line yeah. is. Those were yeah. the bits that repeated, but that was always at the meeting. After that, she, it deviated quite a bit. It was like this yeah. time she follows him to the apartment and, exactly. and that kind of stuff. So for me it was yeah. never repetitive in that sense. Yeah. It was just well, a necessary think, part of explaining yeah. the time travel. I think Elisa yeah. and I are, were are were contrasting it to the last podcast episode that we did was on a Thai boy, uh, boy love called Be My Favorite, and that also had a time travel device. But what the way that we saw it used was that the main characters really grew and changed from each time he would go back <laughs> and he would tweak one thing and think, okay, I've solved it, right, and then come back and realized oh no, and then have to go back and kind of grow. And I don't know that I necessarily, especially for our female character, I don't know that I necessarily saw her have this huge growth, uh, you know, other than her mistakenly thinking, okay, I just have to erase myself from his life. Mm -hmm. And that's how it's going to solve this. I did like the whole we're faded, whatever we have to be together. I'm, I ate that up with a spoon. I'm not taking it, but I'm not, I, I didn't really feel like I don't know. I, I didn't necessarily feel like either of them had this huge level of growth um, other than, okay, we beat the serial killer boss in this level. So now we're going to go back. I don't know. It just, it just kind of felt like. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. Yeah. I really, yeah. I, that was a big yeah. frustration for me because usually in a time travel story, I've seen so many of them at this point uh, for whatever reason, not voluntarily, it just happened, but like, um, you have a character, the character has a problem. And so they think that changing something in the past will solve the problem. And then in the course of the time travel, you the character discovers and we discover that they were misguided, that, that what they thought needed to be solved isn't what actually is going to fix the problem, that they actually have to undergo some personal growth and change mm -hmm. and maturity 
to really solve the problem and that the time travel alone is not it, right? And that's generally mm. how it goes. But with these characters, they're literally, to me, emotionally, the very same people from start to finish. They don't change. They, you know, they're the same at the end. Yeah. And so uh, yeah. that to me got frustrating. Um, <clears throat> another. I know that. No, go ahead. No, go oh, ahead. you go. Go ahead. Well, I was, I was just going to agree in terms of, I feel like the only thing that really evolved was their relationship, but there were so many things between the two characters that I would have loved for them to have dig, like dug a lot deeper into. Like we've talked about how uh, I wish they'd gone into um, Sol's disability more and, and her feelings about that. And then even Sanjay's injury or, or even whether the first episode he did die by suicide or whether it was still um, Yong Su who did that, which I'm assuming is, but they never really actually stated if it was or not, especially when you compare it to the grandmother's scene at the very end of episode 16 where she's like, be happy now. And I'm like, well, is that because he gets to survive or is that because in episode one he was in such a bad place? I don't I don't have yeah. those answers fully. And so I would love to have dived a bit deeper. Like he was depressed. I mean, we don't know who killed him or if he suicided, but he was depressed and he was leaving the group and we never found out why. It was yeah. never explained. There were so many things like that that just never got ex silly things. Like why was Taesung outside of Seoul's apartment in like episode two or three? We mm. never found out. <laughs> <laughs> We yeah. don't know, you know. Right, I want to know. I would like yeah. to know, you know. And so here's what got repetitive for me. Every single time skip had soul falling into Sunjay's arms. Every single time skip had an accidental kiss. Every single time skip had uh, Sunjay getting jealous of Taesung and then doing like some kind of you know, uh, yeah. drinking penis waving drinking <laughs> contest. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Um, every single one, you know, obviously the serial killer was in every single one. Oh, and that was a th allow me to whine a little bit. I, I'm sounding like I hate uh, being a hater, and that I'm not because I, like I said, I love the chemistry between the leads, I love the performances. Uh, Tae Sung was a favorite character of mine, I absolutely loved him. I thought he was charming, I loved his scenes, but like. At the very end, when the serial killer shows up, why is Taesung the one who takes him out? Kind of, sort of, not really, because it's a truck of doom. I was so mad when the truck of doom showed up. I was like, how could you? We spent the whole drama with <laughs> Seoul and... Like, and, and and with no explanation for why that final time jump was the one that ended the cycle. There was nothing about that time skip that was so special that it should have been the end at that point. It didn't really make any sense. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. it just ended. Yeah. And it didn't, it and ended. like, as a writer, uh, I'm gonna sound real obnoxious, but I mean, with, you know, the idea is that you, you get a, a protagonist that has a problem, right? They have a protagonist and antagonist. When the antagonist meets their end at the end of the story, the protagonist should be the person who causes it. Or at least the protagonist should be present when it happens. They weren't even there when the serial killer dies after confronting him over and over again through the whole story. That to me is just... Yeah. Not satisfactory yeah. at all. I was just yeah. like, I don't know. Kidding. I looked at it at a whole different angle. But then again, I think it's because, like, the theories were lovely, but I think that sometimes us fans, we overestimate <laughs> the stories just a little bit. And I feel like that also is what hurts us in the process. I have been burned and burned <laughs> by too many of that. So for me, I guess I kind of went into this, like, you know what, I'm just going to take what I get right and I'm just gonna enjoy it as it goes even if something doesn't make sense I'm like okay whatever I just like the cute part so I didn't really dwell on the 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 uh, mechanics of it all like it has to make sense time travel in essence doesn't make sense in my I mean it's not something that we're all we don't there's no rules you can make your own rules I feel like and a lot of dramas go a different way with time travel I mean we see it in a typical um Family. Is it what is it called? Atypical a typical family. family. Yeah, you see different vibes, completely different vibes of time travel versus lovely murder. So sometimes I do think that um, 
obviously it's more of what we prefer um me i'm not i don't really prefer time travel so maybe that's why i don't have such a strong opinion about it however i do think that the whole villain arc i feel like he was just meant to just be a villain in the sense of he was just one of those comic book villains where anybody that he just meets he would kill them pretty much i think that was kind of the over um the end goal that the writer went with at least towards the end to me it felt like because when that time slip happened he didn't get to meet them therefore he didn't have an issue with them he wasn't chasing after them because he never met soul and sanjay he never interacted with them therefore his whole victim became somebody else whoever he met that he was in contact with became a victim the girl that was his stalker so i don't know to me i felt like that was just basically saying that this whole thing started only because of that encounter he had with her. That one time she was at that bus stop. And this is a psycho man that's just willing to kill anybody. I mean, we saw that he had already killed somebody, you know, in the um during that episode that he was already wanted for murder. So I don't know. I guess I went into it thinking, okay, this guy is just crazy. He will kill anybody pretty much. Like if you get in his way, he's gonna kill you. So therefore, how he died to me was just like he just had to be dead. He Somebody was going to kill him. Uh, it didn't have to be from the leads. I mean, yeah, it would have been kind of picture perfect. But I, I think it was because the leads, he, they weren't his sole victims. He just was a murderer, a, a villain. And whoever he wanted to kill, he would kill. And if he could, he could. And therefore, because she changed this whole thing, he they didn't have that interaction. So I don't know. I guess I looked at it that way. So I wasn't as bothered by that doom of truck. I felt like he deserved it. In fact, that was satisfying to me. For the first time, I was like, okay, just go. I was <laughs> yelling at my screen. I, 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 I was just, like, what <laughs> truck of <laughs> doom? What? Yeah. <laughs> Where have you been the 16 episodes? <laughs> Take him. Go, <laughs> kill him. And, that, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I get I get what you mean. I mean like, the thing yeah. about yeah because here's what i look at is like there's got to be internal consistency or yeah me, there doesn't have to be but i mean there's ideally there should be it's obviously yeah. time travel doesn't exist right but a fantasy worlds create rules and then you have to follow the rules when you start to get really loose with the rules and the internal logic of the story things start to get funky and that's to me it definitely got every after episode eight is when it really started to gradually get, for me, get worse and worse. The episode eight was the episode peak. Eight. Well, episode eight was the peak for me. I absolutely loved it. And I think it's <laughs> telling that it was, um, they were adults in episode mm -hmm. eight. Yeah. And their interaction was very sexy. This is the episode where she's trying to stay with him all night so that he doesn't end up getting killed or out the window. And so, and he doesn't know her, like she's just some fan, right? So she's coming up with all these excuses and, um, or I guess he knows her, but anyway, there was some weirdness about it. No, I can't remember. But anyway, but the, their interactions were so mature, you know, like flirty and the kiss was amazing. And it just like, I really enjoyed that part of the story. So then when we regressed after that back to college, it really, for me, started to feel like, okay, well, now we're back to them being kids again. Now we're back to Soul behaving really awkward and shy with him as if she were actually a 20 year old, but she's not, she's 34. She's already had this physical encounter with him in the previous timeline. It didn't feel consistent. So I had problems. Somebody else should talk because I sh I'm, I'm in the minority. I'm in the Joe. minority. <laughs> okay, go, going back to the truck of doom and the villain. Hey, Joe, yeah, how, yeah. Did, how did you how did you feel about that ending for that arc? Oh, just I just want to talk about 20 year old soul for one second though, because we're okay. just talking about that. Um I thought that I thought that the reason she when she came back that time it wasn't that she was like an awkward teen again. It was that she had just watched him die again. Like that, I, I wish, again, I wish the show had kind of really sunk into like how the impact that would cause on someone having seen it first. First, your savior has died in episode one. And then episode eight, the person you're in love with has died. Like, and mm -hmm. now you've gone back and you you have no idea how to fix this. It's happened yeah. twice. And you're like, this is my last chance and to the best of my knowledge, he died because of me. Yeah. That is is 
yep. where her head is at at that point. It's it's and so for her to want to avoid him, I actually liked that in episode nine, and um, especially that scene where they're sitting on the I don't know that little play equipment thing, whatever it was, and she's <laughs> just crying at him like, can't why why can't you just leave me alone? Like why why would you keep hurting yourself to? like help me and that was a really great scene to kind of show I think where she's at emotionally and yeah. um and then of course going back to the truck of doom for a second <laughs> I actually agree with I, I agree that the story did not listen to any what we define as appropriate like writing tropes as in like no. the, the, <laughs> and the protagonist should be there for the antagonist I, but you know what I don't know who set up those rules and I didn't care that they were defied like I was like, yeah, someone said that that's yeah. how stuff should be written. And then Tae Sung summed it up at the end. He's like, why do we keep giving these, and I agree with this in terms of real life as well, why do we keep giving killers such amazing monikers and backstories yeah. and we want to define everything about them when some of them are just a-holes and we want to actually yeah. understand victimology a bit more. And sometimes there's a young woman walking down a street and a man has targeted her and she ends up unalived yeah. I'm just like I actually but the, the, I think the hard thing was is we didn't find that out until episode 16 yeah we so uh, used yes. to seeing yeah, exactly yeah. villains constantly given all of this backstory so we want to we want to actually do that and this yeah. drama was like nah he's just a piece <laughs> of crap like yeah. <laughs> it was the and I think the, about I don't that. Know, it was just, interesting just to be yeah. clear he did not need a backstory I didn't care about that at all I didn't care about no. that at all. It's just that he yeah. was so tangled up with the main characters. He spent more time with the main characters than the other actors did, like when you think about it, like in terms of screen time. Uh, so it was just a very abrupt end after all that. But I hear what you're saying. I don't need to, any, to know anything about him other than he has an eye twitch and he drives a cab. Plenty of <laughs> like, I, that's all I needed. But it was just, you know, I, I agree with that. But I think it speaks to the fact that why are people watching this? They're not watching this for the time travel. They're watching this because mm. of the romantic tropes that are getting served up. That's it. Yeah. Like yeah. the scene when they're at the beach in in Hyun's uh, hometown and they have the bedroom scene. Everybody, <laughs> the way everybody's hard eyes came out just now. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful scene, you know? It's yeah. just like so beautifully shot and they obviously have amazing chemistry and they look so comfortable. I mean, uh, we've seen so many awkward K drama scenes where they look like they have a gun held to their heads and yeah. any kind of skinship, and this was not that obviously. Boy, have we! Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was so refreshing. We just got normal like interactions, and I love that. And not not like like yeah, kisses like kisses once in the midpoint, and maybe maybe once at the end. <laughs> well, there were kisses after in every time skip, I think. Yeah, they yeah, there were right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, Bionu Sok behind the scenes seems like a very snuggly guy with like the yeah. whole cast, you know, he was constantly touching everybody. So I think that came through, you know, that he's comfortable doing that in those scenes, which is great. And then, I mean, Kim Hye Soon as Yoon, excuse me, has proven through Extraordinary You that she knows how to generate chemistry with very tall co-stars so she's <laughs> tall gorgeous co-stars co we know this already about her so um yeah so it totally worked and i mean that's i think that the the yeah but that still doesn't kind of i mean for me like i said somebody who i did have like problems with the story and wasn't so overwhelmed by it i mean why does why is this turning into something where I mean, um, this is an unfortunate thing. The actor's getting stalked right now. Mm -hmm. And if you're not aware of this, but Beyond yeah. the Stalk is getting stalked, which is the downside of this yeah. phenomenon. Yeah, he's blown up. <laughs> like, and, it's, yeah. It's he's at the top. Like, they have these brand indexes. Yeah, I saw. Mm -hmm. And he's at the top of the brand. I mean, and normally that's like uh, the guy who is the star of Queen of Tears, who I'm blanking on his name, but that he's the top guy usually. Yeah. yeah. And right now, Beyonce is over him. I'm sorry? Yeah. Yeah. She's so, heard his name. 
yeah, yeah. So right. what is this? What is it? Explain it to me. Like, why I will, okay. I will say something positive about the writing. Okay. So the last episode in so many K dramas, you feel like they ran out of gas. They had the big climactic moment in episode 15. And then it's an hour of product placement and filler, right? And, <laughs> and, and, and rehashing um, flashback scenes or something, right? Like we've seen that yeah. over and over and over again. And so we're ready for the proposal. We're ready for it to be amazing. And it was so it was so wonderful that first of all, it was incredibly awkward when he was on the boat and she's like, you're not going to do one of the, there's not going to be fireworks. you know. But then when he realizes she needs to feel this fulfillment of her career goal, that she wants to be a director. And then he lets her have that moment to shine first because he's still a K-pop idol. Like once they announce their relationship, you know, she's, she's, her whole life is going to be upside down and overshadowed and whatever. So I did actually love that there was kind of this interval where she's like, yeah, I'm really busy. I can't, you know, spend time with you and, and just doing her thing. And he was letting her shine. I love that. So that, you know, way to, way to, it was still a little bit, you know, filler feeling, but it was, it was, so positive and just like it's not all about you she can have her moment too and i love that i just had this random thought i just remembered um in a way i think with episode one when he wanted to quit being an idol and wanted to be an actor i think i remember just like i said i'm probably overestimating the writer right here but i think that in some ways perhaps he never wanted to be an idol i think that in a way him singing was a way for her to notice him or that song that he sang for her that said in shower it's it's weird but now i'm looking at it like because it seemed like the last time slip ended with him being an actor and he's happy like he's not you know he remembers now that he used to be an idol. he doesn't even miss being an idol he's clearly happy being an actor and i remember in episode one he wanted to act he wanted to quit right and become an actor so i was just like huh it wasn't probably maybe executed well but i think maybe in some weird way i don't know it just things were that's and that's the thing with time travel sometimes it can be too muddy because there's so much you have to cover like like you know it can be a lot too many characters too many um time like holes that you just forget to fill but I do think that at the end of the day, she just kind of wanted to achieve this whole thing of these are two people meant to be together and they're just going to go through hell a little bit. But <laughs> eventually, somehow, <laughs> life will find its way. He is finally going to be this actor he wanted to be and she's going to be this producer she wanted to be. And I don't know, I think that when you just kind of sum it up like that, then you see, okay, maybe it's just a light drama. You know, I feel like it's never, maybe it's not meant to be as deep as yeah. we would have expected or as we yeah. wanted it to be. And maybe that's why people like it because it really is light. It is like youth. It's like, oh, colors, so lucky, songs, idol, pretty, they're in love, you know? And I think that sometimes people just like that a lot. I mean, Prior to this drama, there was a drama that was Aaron, that was, you know, big cast, that you know, everything. But it just, like, every scene was, like, sad, and, like, people were like, oh, my God. And then you have Lovely Rana come, and it's like, ah, oh, just you and I, you know? Like, oh, I mean, you have this fun... Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, because I was answering Alice's question of why, you know, why maybe people like it. And I think that sometimes people just like dramas that it just kind of goes. You don't really have to, even though, yes, we did have our own theories, you don't really have to really, like, I don't know, dig into it. You just enjoy it as it is. You're like, okay, yeah. this is what's happening. They're time traveling in this episode. She's going to go back. They're going to come this, it's this, you know? And then you just call it a day. It ends and we clap and we call it action. Versus dramas where it's like, okay, this and that. Yes, this, ooh, cast, ooh, okay, this. Sometimes, I don't know, I feel like maybe Lovely Runner was just one of those dramas that it just was meant to be yeah. vibes. It was good <laughs> vibes. Know? Yeah, it just can vibes. I don't know. Like it wasn't like perfect. Personally, it's not like my, my top favorite drama. But 
I get why people like it, you know, and I get why I liked it in that moment. So, I mean, yeah, it has all the recipes, I feel like, to be a hit. Um, and it just became a hit. <laughs> you know, they did it right. I mean, chemistry and everything else, they, they got it. So, I think. Joe, why do you think it grabbed you the way it did? Um, I think that, I mean, one thing that I saw that was really interesting that people were discussing was um, how it compared to King the Land mm. and how it mm-hmm. sort of has that, like, you, you're watching these two people fall in love and the the plot's just, like, kind of irrelevant. <laughs> and I do think that at the end of the day, you know, around, I think it was around episode, oh, was it 12? Yeah, 12 where she ended up, or 13 where she ended up, time jumping again because she had a fourth chance that I kind of threw the rules and plot out the window a tad for me. I was like, okay, if we're defying the rules and it's not a minimum of three, I can't, if I, if I hang on to this, I'm not going to enjoy it. Like I just knew that because I'm a very rule based world building based person as well as it's probably obvious from my theorizing. And so I was questioning in the middle as well, whether he even wanted to be an idol which I think, which is what you were just saying, Vicky, like, did he yeah. want to be one? Yeah. I thought based on the way he was acting as a teenager, he never wanted to be one. It was just a thing no. that happened because he couldn't exactly. swim anymore. And um, and in, in episode one, he didn't want to be one, you know. He kept saying no to CEO Kim whenever he's like, here, take my card. He's just like, nah, I'm good. And then uh, he was an idol in episode eight again, but then I wasn't shocked when he wasn't one in episode, you know, final time jump. He chose for himself. Huh? And, um, and so, but it's yeah, interesting that like he that was, was still... There's no influences. There's no guilt. Yeah. Oh, sorry, oh no, yeah. but it, I found it really interesting that he was still famous. Like, he's not an idol, but he's Have still... Have you a, seen and his face, came, No, 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 no. <laughs> Look, I mean, yes. I'm not surprised he's still famous. <laughs> I'm not no, 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 no. I only bring it up because I'm annoying, but also because like it was it came out of nowhere. Like why why did he become an actor? There was never any indication he cared about anything like yeah. that. And then mm-hmm. but they it kind of felt more like because the fantasy to start is the hot, famous, rich guy helplessly in love with the ordinary girl. That's yeah. the fantasy. Mm-hmm. And so you could not end that with him just being a guy, Broke. a coach. <laughs> you know, a guy, guy. Right, yeah. Like, like has, you know, like he's be working. You know? He started as a UPS delivery. He's going to get up you know, like that. Yeah. Or even, but even just an average person in an office, right? That no. wasn't going to, ha- or like, you know, taking over his father's restaurant. It was never yeah. going to happen, right? It, it's yeah. just I just found that interesting because it just came out of nowhere. Yeah. But I think that the the show, yeah, it really does transcend logic because I think it's just uh, it's a feel generator. It's a me it, like it's just mm-hmm. like a crack hit after crack hit to the Amidala <laughs> yeah. of just like squeal inducing moments and swoony moments that and the connective tissue is whatever you know it doesn't really matter <laughs> nope. i will say um, i'll say it had more of a plot than king the land that i will say <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah. i didn't i didn't mean to compare yeah it to yeah land. no but you're I'm not so the only sorry. person making I that just comparison meant in terms of like I've seen other people say the same thing. And I, but I do think that there is a comparison in the sense that Kingdom Land was just a moment after moment after moment of sweetness, sweet yeah. things, and then not really anything for it to hang together. Yeah. Um, I think Lovely Writer did a better job than that. But I mean, I think the plot holes or whatever, like the illogical things with the time travel are irrelevant, as you said, because that's not what people came for. Yeah. People came for, yeah. you know, the, oh, my God, I'm drowning. I'm drowning. It just feels like I'm in love with these people. It feels yeah. like, you know, it's yeah. it's just this overwhelming emotion, an ocean of emotion, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that you can just <laughs> swim in. And people are going through mourning right now. Yeah. Um, the oh, fan yeah. response yeah. is really interesting. Like, people definitely- are saying... Yeah. I don't know There's what to do with myself Monday, anymore. Yeah. What am I going to do? And because that wasn't the, one of the interesting things about it is that it was a Monday and Tuesday drama. Because yeah. the people putting it out really didn't have the, this is going to be a huge thing. Oh, because it's been a Friday, Saturday drama. All right. I want to give some love 
to our second male le- lead, Song gung playing Kim Taesung. Like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. The bad boy. I oh, love him. Old. I loved him. <laughs> <laughs> Even when he had bad hair. I loved Thank him. You. Out of the world. I loved him. He was my favorite character by far. He was really my favorite. I just loved him. I, I wasn't said. surprised. I, I saw him. I was like, Alyssa's gonna like him. I didn't know what it was, but it's like he has all the recipes that she would like. Yes, it's I true. No, I it just like, like in true beauty. You like this thing to go by, but true. Well, I just like guys that are yeah, a little, true beauty. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, him yeah. too. But like, well, the writer um, is a writer is true beauty, and she's so good yeah. at writing second second leads. Like she just yeah. nails it. Well, you know, she actually said the reason why she made Taesong not um like fighting because of true beauty. She learned her lesson from that whole thing that started from the fandom. So she said she wanted to create you know a more loving um chemistry between the male lead and the second lead male because of that so they did, they did, yeah. they did good with those romance scenes, yeah I will say that. yeah but i just i loved how he could see through her when no one else could he's like oh how many is yeah you? right yeah like he yeah. he i mean when nobody else had a clue he immediately could say oh yeah you're 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 the other one you're back you his know? little smart <laughs> Ah, he, he was so smart but and funny. <laughs> yeah. And I love the way he enjoyed poking Sunday. Mm-hmm. It was, he was a fun hilarious. character. I loved I loved him in that. Yeah. It was it the was scene perfect. where they he's sleeping over and he just yeah. keeps needling him cuz he knows he can. I know. It was like I love it. But I mean that's definitely much more my type of character. Like I don't really yeah. so like there were a few things in the drama that didn't really land for me but I know that the fandom ate it up. Like the whole thing mm-hmm. of like I'm ready to die for you and mm-hmm. I don't care if I die it, as long as we're together and my brain went wait a minute. No, 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 sir. Like don't do that. Like we should want to live together and not die yeah. together. Like I didn't I, really- I agree with that. I'm not into that whole thing either but right. no yeah. but the fandom loved it i mean it was you know such a huge moment i think that was in the second or third time skip i'm trying to remember but like yeah. where she he finally he figures out that she's a time traveler and she's like well you're gonna die if yeah and he's like i don't care and i'm like really you don't care <laughs> why I, I don't did, you care I did, I did like the line you know stop running away from me you can just like me. you can just we can yeah. just well that me. oh yes that's a very romantic yeah that line. one was nice. yes i like yes yes but i mean yeah. so there was so much like okay like if you'd clued him in to what was going on like when she left him on the bus and she's trying to protect him and it's like okay like if you were like, like, clue him in with stuff, and then maybe he won't die. Like, you know, yeah, think, yes, right? <laughs> So <laughs> I'm not taking you know, self defense classes. Or... Speaking of, okay, so speaking something. of the, like, writing something. again, I thought you had Soul keep going solo through, you know, one time, two times, three times. I thought that the final time skip was going to be her realizing that she can't do it alone and that she and Sanjay are going to have to unite to take down the yeah. enemy. Yeah. And that didn't happen. It <laughs> never happened. But, like, but guess what? Maybe that would have made it too typical because we thought it would happen, right? Maybe that's why it did happen. In a way, in a way. I mean, in a perfect world, yeah. It would have. I mean, that. yeah, for me, for me, uh, it was about- again speaking to the fact that the characters yeah. didn't evolve and they didn't learn yeah. anything yeah. throughout. There was no lesson. I mean, not that they have to be lessons. I'm not talking about like taking lessons like pills. Um, I don't yeah. like didactic stories, but it was just more like as a, as a, a exhibiting the growth and that there, there was yeah. no growth. There was the same yeah. at the end, except that the taxi driver died. So like, yay, we can be together. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. I mean, you know, I like I said, I think that w- where it really sh- the the drama really took off was just those incredibly sweet, endearing moments. And Bionu Sok is like, even though he looks like a model because he was a model, um, he's got a very warm affect. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah he does. His eyes are very warm. And the way he carries himself, he's definitely not carrying himself like, ooh, look at me, I'm the hot guy, I'm the hot guy. I mean, he can do that. He does that in the idol scenes, but that's not like the appeal. The appeal is when 
He's just radiating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's like, his <laughs> well, you. this was a really sweet scene. Um, they showed the behind the scenes with the Halmani in the last episode oh, yeah. where she pats him on the heart. Oh my God. And they were rehearsing and he couldn't stop crying and he wasn't supposed to cry in the scene. And they finally said, fine, cry in the scene. And they let him cry yeah. in the scene because he couldn't stop himself. Yeah. And he was hugging her and, you know, it was like, so he's naturally like a warm person, you can just tell. Yeah. And so, and it came through in the character. And I think that that's unusual. Like we have a lot of cold, he's the opposite of a sundere. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. That's the appeal, yeah. <laughs> you know, like he's, yes. he is a cinnamon roll through and through. Yeah. <laughs> he is. He is. Cinnamon oh roll, gosh. but also yes. effusive, like, completely unafraid like the scene one of the best scenes in the drama is like when he's throwing kisses at soul after she goes inside and then he turns <laughs> around and in hyuk is looking at him and then he starts throwing kisses at yeah. in -Hyuk, you know <laughs> and he who's horrified you know by what he's seeing and he's like i don't care yes i'm blowing kisses because i'm crazy about this girl i'm head over heels i don't care if you see me doing this you know um, so i think that was you know and that's what I meant by loser, by the way, at the beginning of the podcast. Like the fandom, yeah. very affectionately, the fandom was talking about is loserism. Which yeah. I agree is like key to the whole special magic of people of love the it drama. actually. Like I've noticed that, especially you see it in the whole I know it was stronger bone soon. That was like one of the things they love with Park Hansu's character. He was just like a loser and it blew up too at that era you know they love them together like i don't know people just love it people love that type of a uh, character so so joe you may have been the most obsessed on this podcast of this show were you satisfied with the way things wrapped up in the ending i mean i kind of like that she tried one time where she just like i'm gonna eliminate myself from your life and um you know, I, I think that was kind of a logical thing. Like if, if she never meets me, then none of this will happen. And then they get to fall in love all over again. So I, I was mostly on board with our, our final twist, but I'm wondering if you were satisfied with the way everything wrapped up. Yeah, I was. I mean, there was, there was of course, questions that I didn't have answers to, but um, I thought that in terms of having her having seen him die for a third time and this time literally watching it happen where she ended up in that final fourth time jump was absolutely believable to me I don't know how she managed to jump earlier to what she normally has but it doesn't matter guys it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> she just did okay <laughs> and, uh, and and the fact that we just got a final episode of just being able to see them together after all the angst of them not being allowed to be together was really refreshing. I wish yeah. more dramas gave us a full episode of characters being together and it was so yeah. delightful to watch. It just felt like it was what we needed. You know, they wrapped yeah. up the, the serial killer storyline in five minutes at the beginning and we just got to have the emotional fallout, which was the thing that they actually focused on in the entire drama anyway. It was always about that relationship, that faded relationship and how much they loved each other. And that was what we got in those final one hour of television. One thing though that I'm curious about, just back to Taesong for one second, is the fact that even though I don't know if it was intentional, he was always there for the big time travel changes. Yes. So he was there yes. for the fire yes. scene. I don't know how his dad was there, but his dad was there for when she gets attacked. I was like, okay, at least that's family related. It's blood, you know. And then he's there for the the successful stopping of Kim, uh, of um, Young Su. And I was like, okay, yeah. if I'm doing a spin off, it's understanding how Tae Sung is is like taking <laughs> over for Seoul's grandmother for being some kind of time travel wizard because that is what happened in that drama i'm convinced that he yeah. he's yeah. he's giving someone the next time travel journey it is some weird magical <laughs> thing going on and that's where i've landed me filling in my own gaps I mean, <laughs> really well yeah. i felt the same way like there were so many signs that he could have been another tra traveler just the fact that he knew when old soul was there and he was the thought, only yeah. one. He was yeah. there when they put the fire out. Right. He was, the, he was the one where was, she yeah. felt like the timeline could never change. And because he was there, 
and and she told you know it's like he was able to change the timeline change fate whatever and yeah. so i kept you know when we had that fire scene i'm like okay he's the key to everything like some, <laughs> somehow he's and then it was like okay i mean yes nope. his car was the key to you know stopping the serial killer or whatever but i i, I don't know like i mean i heard he wasn't I guess even it, in the book right he wasn't his character wasn't in the original no I no Joe, did you that. read the did you read the web comic or whatever it was or or were would you wanting to be not spoiled as to what was going to happen next? Uh, so yeah, I never read it. I just never found it either. Yeah, okay. people. Said it was good. It would be so um, different anyway. So that's why I kind of yeah. just ignored it. But to me, that was one of those dangling threads that I found yes. ir yeah. irritating to be. <laughs> but you know that the thing, the trend of having uh, a. So an, an episode ending episode where there you get to see the couple together actually uh, marry my husband had the same thing so yeah. oh and i guess maybe queen is i didn't watch queen of tears but queen of tears had a similar thing right they definitely had kind of an epilogue where you saw that they had kids and and all of that so. yeah so that may just yeah, be like a new trend i don't know you got like 15 minutes of them happy i think yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in queen of tears yeah, just, just a little bit. But at least Mary, Mary, my husband, gave you a full wedding and the babies and the whole thing. And yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, what did you guys think of, uh, about the other supporting characters? I mean, her best friend, um, we have seen her in other dramas and she's so, she's, she has been so funny in the past. Like, I, sometimes she was like a little bit too much for me in this one, but yeah. I, I just, they were, they were, she was mostly very funny and I loved all of her different hairstyles. It was pretty amusing. Her uh, and the brother's relationship was kind of for me. I wasn't really into it. I fast forwarded through everything with them. I just didn't, and I've seen her before and, and liked her. It wasn't, I don't think it's yeah. the actress. I think it's the way the part was written. I just, yeah. so when I did thumbs down, guys, I'm not dragging the actress. I don't think it's her. It's the right, it's the character writing. Mm, I didn't, yeah. and it, it felt like a waste yeah. of time because it didn't really like, it wasn't funny. And it didn't really yeah. take was, us anywhere. Like the toilet jokes. I'm not. Yeah. Really and all. there were so many. <laughs> like I the just, father getting like, trapped in the toilet. Like, like that's. I like, just don't why. understand why Sol never really got a friendship with her best friend. I thought that at some point the mm. best friend would feed into Sol's journey in some way. And I was really gutted because they set up their friendship beautifully in episode one. She's like driving her around and she's constantly there for her. And even when she gets stuck on the bridge and she's probably meant to get public transport home, her friend is there. It's like that, that level of friendship was so beautiful in episode one. And the fact that they never, like she never became part of, the time travel journey ever. Yeah. She don't think she ever even found yeah. out about it. No. And that gutted me because it's felt like it's such an important element. And yeah, even just yeah. even just her family, the fact that they never let them be like the communication issues that she had with her family, them never telling her who saved her in episode one or them never talking about her kidnapping. Like there's so many yeah. things where they never talked about it. And I thought, great, maybe they're gonna like like start to unpack things so i was really disappointed that yeah. those side characters never got to be part of the the growth and yeah. journey and they sacrificed the friendship so for her to really. get close to the brother and it was like no it was <laughs> such a, a such an intense laser focus on Cole and yeah. sanjay that yeah. It just didn't leave any room for any development because, like, we didn't care that the serial killer didn't get developed, but really nobody got developed. Yeah, no. Um, you know, and so that was. I think that's so, the interesting thing with webtoons sometimes. Like, I don't know yeah. how it goes, but the ones that I've read, because of how it's written, sometimes when it comes out in like you know real like a drama, it can be very. It can be what you see, what you saw with Lovely Runner. And like sometimes in True Beauty, I had the same issues with the flow of things because there's just something about it that it's like a disconnect because you only see one centralized view sometimes of characters. You don't get to see enough. I don't know. You don't, it's something off. I don't know. Like I don't know how to describe it, but it, it, it doesn't translate well enough when it becomes a live action. 
if that makes mm. sense. And I think I've seen that flaw in in like webtoon adapted drama sometimes. There's there's, there's a disconnect. They can be a little sketchy unless the writers yeah. are good at adapting. Yeah, them. unless the writers are good at adapting. Because yeah. yeah, it's a really different experience to skim or read a book mm -hmm. versus yeah, yeah, it is. It is. a film thing. It is. But they did what they could. It was fine. It was okay. It was okay. So <laughs> I'm wondering where Beyond Usok and Kim Hye Yoon are going to end up after all this. Like I'm wondering what their careers are going to be like. <laughs> well, uh, I don't. I, I'm I'm really curious because there's suddenly oh. this huge buzz, and he needs to pick a good drama next year. <laughs> yes. Well, he should definitely like leap into a better yeah. quality drama. Yes. Um, yes. for his yes. next one. Do you all wonder yeah. who they originally offered Sanjay to? Do we know? I know. Do you wonder that? I who, know who, who they were thinking of, and I'm so glad that they didn't. Who Even was it? I like him. I will not name names. Oh uh, man! <laughs> when the camera's <laughs> off, you gotta tell me. I wanna know. Well, you know yeah, you know as soon as that's off, I wanna know. I mean, I honestly don't. I can't imagine anyone else playing it because you have I mean, to have. I mean, I mean, wasn't in. this wasn't this in development hell for like three years or something? Yeah. I mean. It Nobody took them a long time. Yeah. And you know, he was unproven because he'd never done a lead role before. And yeah, you know, you need to have a combination of stunningly good looking and yet able to be so warm, effusive, over the top. You know, that's the charm of the character. And mm -hmm. it's a I mean the character was a lot. Like oh, yeah. the character oh, yeah. was what, a singer, yeah. a swimmer, <laughs> heart eyes, lovable dog loser. Um, like he was just so many different things. He was 34 and 19. Yeah. Who can do that? Only can And do he that. had to Only. learn how to swim <laughs> for it too. And he had to learn how to sing. He didn't know yeah. how to sing. He took voice nice. lessons. Jeez. And he's charting. <laughs> it's so really no. He he deserves yeah. all of the Inspired. I know about I, I know about the online controversy about who's getting credited and who's not and oh, yada. But yeah. I honestly truly believe he deserves the credit he's getting yeah, yeah. i don't think he worked it's hard too. out of yeah. proportion to yeah. what he did yeah. and this I, I mean let's just say also the soundtrack was fire i mean the soundtrack oh, yeah, was, was so catchy as well so um yeah. you know i really enjoyed enjoyed the soundtrack I like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, i'll wait before well, my, well okay. my, fi my final thought my final question is like do you think a year from now this will be a drama people recommend or not yeah, I would. I think so. I think so. I Especially so. because of the ending. <laughs> like, that episode 16 wrapped up for a lot of people. Like, oh, like it was just like, you know, fluff. I think people will recommend it. I do wonder. Yeah, I do wonder if fresh voices coming in to watch it will have some of the, the plot questions that we do have. But overall, yeah, of course. I think that of it's course. just such a beautiful drama. It's impossible not to love it. Like, it's just, no, well. Right. I mean, maybe some people don't love it, but I personally loved it. And I would recommend it so often. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, I, I think I think it it feeds you so many tropes and and good vibes, and and if you enjoy seeing those kind of chemistry moments. Uh, there's certain dramas that you feel starved for those moments. Like oh. they're so plot heavy, and you're like, "Geez, Louise, can these two go yeah. on a date or something?" Like. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, I mean, there's so, sometimes there's so much plot, <sighs> and and yeah, and this one just gave us so much good vibes. So yeah. you know, it it would depend maybe on the person I'm recommending, but definitely if somebody's yeah. like, oh, I just need something light, you know, and enjoyable and romantic. Yeah, I definitely would re recommend. Lonely I agree. Lonely to them. I agree. Same. 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 No. Yep. To Elisa, if she had never watched it, I don't know if I would have. To me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and if I dropped it, I dropped Queen, didn't drop it. Like, let's 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 give it up for Lovely Runner because Elisa did not drop it. Okay? I didn't drop it. Like, the Queen of Rock <laughs> did not drop You have no idea. When I saw <laughs> she was watching, watching it, I was like, no way. I was like, <laughs> 
Yeah, people we know, know you me. were so known. You were yeah, so like, known. Why did you say? Like, why did you not drop it? I need right? to know why. Because why did you, you not drop it? Everybody else stayed because of the feels. Right. I mean, because of the cute uh, moments and you know yeah. the romance, and it was cute. And I will I, say that my enjoyment dropped off, gradually dropped off to the end. I per and I didn't I didn't actually love the ending. Oh, ep episode thirteen, I was just like, <laughs> like oh no, yeah. uh, that was my <laughs> least favorite episode. <laughs> and even episode sixteen, I'm... I was just cranky because I was like, truck of doom, truck, and literally like the rest of the episode, I was like, truck of doom. You got to be kidding me, truck no! of doom. No, it so, breaks down uh, from your mind. <laughs> But, but um, <laughs> I was glad. Oh, like I said, for me, it, it peaked at episode eight. But no, it was, I mean, it's a very cute drama. I would definitely say, yeah. you know, it's it's and it's also just it's, really awesome to have a drama that pretty much the whole fandom was watching together, and that was yeah. what enhanced mm -hmm. the experience. Yeah. Those that are going to come later and just binge it are not. I mean, it was just really enjoyable. And we had a little bit of that with Mary, my husband, but it wasn't as big, right? It just wasn't as big mm -hmm. as Lovely Runner. And that was part of it. It was just the fan experience of, you know, what crazy theory is Joe going to have this week? <laughs> But I mean, literally, it was just so fun None watching of them with everybody. I enjoyed watching all of them. Thinking, oh, <laughs> but it was just really an enjoyable fan experience. I gave up by episode fourteen. I stopped theorizing. After yeah. episode thirteen, and you're just like, forget it. Oh, some of the threads I saw, and I knew reading them, I was like, none of this is happening. And none of this so is so obvious. I was like, bless you, but none of this is happening. Like, come on. I mean, the, the, cra the craze for this drama is real. Just before we started recording, um, somebody sent a link to us of this. Um, I can't remember the name of his Instagram account, but I mean, he's a very famous guy that's in LA and he all does about Korean content and content and explaining things. And he was unboxing. He got the watch oh, from sorry. the show. <laughs> He got the watch from the show and he was just over the moon showing, you know, the, the, the watch. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, you know, like the reach wow. of this, you know. So with it, no promo. Actually, I, didn't even know. I know with right? no promo. Right? Yeah. Oh, TVN must be hey, kicking like their right now. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to read the article in any depth before this, which is too bad. But apparently they did workshop the the drama and yeah, they had they focus groups with women before the mm. drama aired. And so mm. that's actually unusual for K-dramas. And I think that that had a lot to do with the success. I mean, they just found a different way to tap into, well, what do women actually want to see? And yeah. then the drama served it up. So I served I, it up and served it and up. Served it up <laughs> and served it up, right. <laughs> but no, I just think that's very uh -huh. interesting. First of all, I was surprised they haven't done that before. I would think that's standard, but apparently it's not. And But Lovely yeah. Runner did it. And so I think that's going to be a lesson for the I'm industry. Really, yeah. I'll send you the article, Joe. I'm really I have curious to go about look the for um, it. Ray shoots. Yes. Done, there's all this, because there's all this footage of, them in different outfits with different hairstyles and stuff like that. And then suddenly we we're all realizing, oh, it's because they've reshot. Yeah, so they changed. I wonder what prompted director. the reshoot. Yeah, three directors. Yeah, wow. yeah they changed Why directors in the middle wow. of the shoot. They, but they did, yeah. So, I mean, it would be, you. I feel like you could almost do a podcast just on the production itself and then how yeah. that came together because it is different than the typical drama. And I think that that probably had a lot to do with the success of the story of the, you know, why people got into it so much. Yeah, I mean, so many other dramas, you feel like well, there's this one strong director with a vision or whatever, and I had no idea that there was three different directors. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. Uh, did everybody do their final thoughts? I would definitely recommend it to somebody. What, Vicky, like, not, everybody's nodding. For those who are just listening, <laughs> everybody's nodding. <laughs> Yeah. But it will be, yeah, it will be interesting, like you say, if the, like, crash landing on you, kind of the yeah. bloom came off the rose a little bit over yeah. time. It's like, you know, because that was the first drama for so many people. And then yeah. we, then we sought out and saw better dramas after that. But, um, 
you know, this one was just so light and fun. And yeah. I, I, like you, Elisa, I'm going to be very interested to see where these actors grow next, right? Yeah. And what yeah. what what heights um, to his career are we going to see? Like, what kind of drama is he going to choose to do next? I, I you know, we're all going to be waiting with bated breath. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yep. The pressure is on. Okay, so uh, anybody else want to have any final thoughts? Joe, what are you going to do with yourself now? You gonna yeah. move? <laughs> I, I am catching up on work that I did not do for two months. <laughs> <laughs> and sleep, sleep. Keep was sleeping sleep. It, you know, while sleep. I'm waiting, while I'm waiting for new episodes of the Atypical Family, I'll just rewatch episodes. So it's a lovely runner. Isn't it two more episodes? Left? Watching's there for a reason. Yeah, two more episodes two. of Atypical of Family. I need to watch the last Sunday's episode. It's really good. You're gonna. Well, I, I'm really anyway. glad that we could all get together and talk about this. this. is so rare to be able to talk about something it's been so right long. after right after it <laughs> airs, and this is uh, only a week after the final episode. So that was really awesome yeah. and. Yeah, it's good to see you guys again and talk about dramas again. So this was this was wonderful. So thanks everybody for joining us. Um, Alyssa, any final thoughts? No, I'm just okay. glad that we're here and let's do more. Let's do more. All right. Thanks All right. everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.